Ooh. Hello teachers. Today I'm going to tell you what you should know when traveling by road in Vietnam. Ready? All right, in Vietnam, flights are extremely reasonable as far as cost. But if you're only taking a short trip, maybe a few hours, it might be your better option to travel by land. There are many buses and coach services available for this, but some are more practical than others and some are also more enjoyable than others. Here is a good comprehensive list of the buses and coach services available in Vietnam. Are you ready? There are four major public transport systems in Vietnam. Buses, coaches, limousines, and trains. Buses, sleeper buses, mini buses, and limousines. Let's talk about buses. When traveling by a bus in a town or city, there are two main types. There's the type that caters to all travelers and all people in the town. And then there's a type that caters to mostly travelers, which is more like a coach service and is geared for tourists rather than the local people in the area. The local bus service is a little limited as far as having the starting point and the ending point. It's more concerned with connecting all of the points in between. So it's a little more impractical. If you're just making an hour journey, this is going to take much longer because of the multiple stops on the way. The coach service for busing is a little bit different because it is geared for tourists and it's going to have fewer stops in between. So you getting from point A to B would be a little bit faster and there are pretty much two basic sizes. There is one bus that holds about 20 people and there's another bus that holds about 35. The bus coaches are pretty basic, but they're acceptable. You have a seat all to yourself. Ooh and your luggage is stored um, underneath the bus. So there's plenty of leg room, there's plenty of space on the bus. You're not gonna be um, crouched in too hard. It also has air conditioning, but no seat belts. Now, most of them are going to say that they provide free internet, but in many cases, the internet's not working that day. But you might get lucky. There's also going to usually be a um, large, prominent TV screen that is gonna play a movie, so you can bring your headphones and just put them in to block out some of the other noises going on. Bus coaches usually leave from the local bus station. There are sleeper buses in Vietnam. And just like its name, instead of offering seats on the bus, it offers pods for you to sleep in during your journey. And there are usually two pods, one pod on top, one on the bottom. There's only one step to get to the top pod, so it's quite a climb for you. So it's just an elongated area that you're able to lay down on. It has a sidebar so that you don't fall off. It gives you a blanket so that you can get comfortable. <laughs> when you get on the bus, uh, you're given a plastic bag to put your shoes in and then a pair of flip-flops to wear. Uh, there's also a large basket of flip-flops so you can take a pair for your journey. The sleeper buses are a little bit more expensive than the normal buses, of course, but their comfort is much higher as well. So if your trip is going to be a little bit longer than a few hours, I would recommend taking a sleeper bus. The internet is provided, but not guaranteed. Uh, and there's usually not the TV on the sleeper bus, usually maybe just a speaker with some music. So you won't have to fight over which movie to watch. Uh, you can just more relax and sleep. Now, if you have a need for speed and you're okay with a little bit of danger, then you might want to take a mini bus. Mini buses are a little more popular for the shorter routes, you know, about three hours or less, but they do have a reputation for being a little more dangerous than the buses because of the way they just zoom around traffic. It holds about 12 people in the back and two people sit in front with the driver. There should be seat belts for everybody but the front seat sometimes misses out. Uh, some companies will assign the seats as you buy your ticket, so make sure you request a window seat. Um, some of them have the fold-up seats for others to sit on and you kind of get squashed in them. 
All in all, minibuses do offer a reasonable level of comfort, uh, but it's the speed that you're gonna like most. <laughs> all right, last one, limousines. A limousine in Vietnam is not the long stretch black car. It's actually a glorified minibus, um, a luxury minivan. There are luxury seats in the cabin and it reminds you of being in like a first class seat on an airplane. The cost, of course, is more expensive for the limousine versus the minibus, but the level of comfort, the space, um, and your enjoyment level is going to be much higher. Uh, so I would recommend this if you can afford the cost. It can be very luxurious. I want to tell you about booking a ticket. There are two ways, booking online and booking in person. If you book online, it's a little bit higher because you're paying the cost for the agency fee. There are two main websites that will help you with booking and understanding in Vietnam, and here they are. There are two main websites that will help you with booking in Vietnam, Baolao.com and 12GoAsia. Both are going to show you which type of bus is provided, the cost, they're going to help you allocate your seat. You pay with your credit card and then when you go to the bus station, you just show your electronic receipt. Booking in person has its advantage. You actually go to the place where you're going to be leaving from so you know where it's at. Uh, and the cost is a little bit less. Usually the departure station is just a huge parking lot. That's incredibly easy to spot. But the sleeper bus, the mini bus, the limousine is usually kind of tucked away in a smaller lot. It can be a little more difficult to find. So going there in person for your first trip to buy the ticket helps you kind of figure out where you're going to be leaving from exactly. There is a toilet at the bus station and most of the limousine and mini bus uh, stations have a toilet in the back. Um, but the vehicles themselves do not have toilets and what they will do is make pit stops at restaurants or cafes the driver will let you off and he'll tell you how long you have um, to visit the area and then you simply return to the bus and continue on with your journey. The bus driver will do a head count to make sure that everyone has gotten back on and that you are not left behind. I think the final piece of this puzzle that would be helpful is talking about picking up and dropping off, which is very convenient with this service. Most of these are going to drop you off and can even pick you up from your hotel. So this will just give you a lot of convenience as far as not having to drag your luggage around town, not having to call and connect through taxis. Um, but it's just an option that you can include in your booking of your ticket. It's a good way to travel. I mean, you get to see the land, you get to go through the towns and see the local people and the way of life. I recommend traveling by land for the short journeys and I recommend a window seat. <laughs> Enjoy your day teachers. See you next video.